Hey guys, in this piano lesson we're going to look at pentatonic scales. By the end of the lesson you're going to know how to make a major pentatonic scale, a minor pentatonic and a blues scale. And you're going to learn how to adapt it to any chord progression of uh, contemporary music that you might be playing. Also I'm going to show you three fun licks that you can use for your improvisation so stick around to the end to check those out. Let's dive in and check out these scales. So how I'm going to teach these to you, I'm going to deep dive into the minor pentatonic scale and then we'll learn the other two scales based off that one. Alright, this is the minor pentatonic scale. So it sounds like this. So if we look at the formula, we have the root note, C, then we've got our minor third. If you don't know what a minor third is, it's three semitones away from the last note. One, two, three. Then we've got a tone, which is two semitones away. Then we've got a tone again, a minor third, and a tone. So basically built from minor thirds and tones. And that's our minor pentatonic scale. That formula will work if you transfer it to other keys. Root note, minor third, tone, tone, minor third, root note. Let's take it back to C again. Now, if you look at this carefully, it's actually the same shape twice. So we've got minor third, tone. Start on this. Minor third, tone. So you've got these two segments that are exactly the same intervals apart. Now, in between these two segments, we have this note here. This note here is actually a point of tension, it clashes with that root note because it's something called a tritone interval away. It also dissects the scale by exactly half. So it's tension that wants to be resolved to other notes. And that note there is called the blues note. So, our minor pentatonic scale is this, and our blues scale is this. Exactly the same notes, but just adding this note in there. Now, the other scale we can look at is the major pentatonic. And how I'm going to teach this to you is just by familiarising yourself with this scale, but actually starting it off the second note of the scale. Now it's no longer a scale in C, we're actually treating this as an E flat major pentatonic. But you can see the relationship between E flat and C. They're actually relative major and minor. So if I play my E flat major pentatonic, I'm thinking in terms of C, but I'm starting off the second note. Now here's where it gets interesting, that's our major pentatonic, but I can actually add our blues note that we had in C, and it actually does this nice little slip onto the major third of E flat. So even though it's the same notes, because I'm using it over an E flat major scale, that's our E flat major pentatonic. So if I want to work that out in another key, I do it like so. I want to work out my C major pentatonic. I'm going to go down a minor third by going down three semitones. One, two, three. Now I'm going to build an A minor pentatonic. Remember the minor third there, tone, then minor third there and tone and our blues note in the middle but I want to think about it in C so I've got that those A's in my peripherals but I'm actually thinking of the scale from C to C that's A blues and C major pentatonic with the blues note 
it coming to rest at C rather than the A um, because that's kind of the stronger note against that chord. Okay, that's the way you make the scales. Let's now apply it to some chord progressions and this is where it gets really fun. I'm first of all going to explore the major chord progressions. We can use these scales in a number of ways. So you've probably heard that they're great for improvisation to start with. So if I have a chord progression in C major, so let's just do that. One, two, four, one. So I can use my major pentatonic scale to improvise over that. It's not just for improvisation. If I was playing in an accompaniment style, I could actually do a few riffs around my chords. So I could play something like this. So all I'm doing there is I'm mixing my accompaniment style with a few riffs in between there as well. You can also use the minor pentatonic or the minor blues if you like over that major chord progression. So what it does is it creates a bit of a minor shade over that major progression. I'll show you what I mean. It creates a minor shade, but it sort of all works. But if you want to make the best of both worlds, you're using a combination of those major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic. And you can basically think of it as one conjoined scale. So I just think of it as like a C major scale with a chromatic run up to the G and then the flat seven. And then you can kind of mix and match those. Notice how I'm kind of resolving to the E when we get to the C there too. So you can kind of play with those uh, minor shades and the major shades as your um, improvising or creating riffs. You can actually play these over two five ones as well. Look at this major pentatonic here. And what if I want to add that kind of... See how I mixed and matched that minor blues pentatonic with that major. Major two five one. Now in a minor key, the only scale that really works is that minor pentatonic, or the blues scale. The major pentatonic definitely doesn't work over a minor key. I'll show you what I mean. Here is a C minor, F minor, G, and C minor. So we'll just play with those chords in the left hand, and I'll show you the right hand scales. works well over that kind of minor tonality there. If I try to use a major pentatonic, really doesn't work. Can you hear all those clashing notes? It's because that doesn't really work that well. Funnily enough, it works the other way. If you've got a major tonality and you've got the minor third, because it creates this sort of sharp, whiny sort of sound but it doesn't work the other way. So when you've got a minor chord progression, it's easy. Just think minor pentatonic scale. And when you want to, add that blues note. I really don't think of it as a blues scale or minor pentatonic. I just think of it as the same kind of pool of notes and knowing that I've got that blues note that I can add in there. 
All right, let's look at Ain't No Sunshine. Great Bill Withers classic. A minor, E minor, G, A minor is the main crux of it. Okay, I'll just play over that riff. I won't do the whole progression. Now that's in A minor. So A minor is our tonality. Therefore, we're looking for the A blues scale. A minor third tone, E minor third tone. There's our blues scale, and if I want to, there's my blues note in the middle. Now, I can use that for improv. I can also use them as riffs in between the chord progression. there I can also think of using that scale to work out melodies now, if I find the first note no sunshine when she's gone. okay that's technically not in the scale but you can see predominantly most of them are from that scale from that blues scale. So that's three ways you can use the blues scale in that song. You can use it for improv, you can use it for working out the melody, or you can use it for playing riffs in between. Now let's look at Superstition, Stevie Wonder. We'll play the E flat version. This is a great example because if we know that our main key is E flat minor, we go minor third tone, minor third tone. And look, it's all the black notes. A great and using our blues note there. So a great scale because it's pretty easy to work out with all the black notes. So if we're playing a superstition, that whole riff is from the minor pentatonic scale. Check this out. Now we're adding that blues note. So see, that's all really from that minor blues scale. So that's the riff. I can also use it as working out the melodies. Very superstitions, writings on the wall. See, that's all the minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so that's working out the melody. And obviously you've got your improv as well. So if I'm just in E minor. improv in E flat minor. All right, now let's look at the major chord progressions. And I left these to last because there are the two scales that you can use. You've got your major pentatonic and you've also got the minor blues that you can use as well. So let's look at Valerie. But we'll do the Amy Winehouse version. Uh, so E flat major seven to F minor seven is all that's happening in the verse. All right, so. E flat is my root note, but I want to work out my major pentatonic scale. I'm going to go down a minor third, and I'm going to build a scale off here, my minor pentatonic scale. I've actually done this one before, you can see, but now I'm going to think about it as E flat to E flat. And I've got my blues note here. So if I want to solo over Valerie, Okay, 
Okay, so there's an example of soloing. I could use it as riffs between my accompaniment. So I'm just doing a little riff based off that pentatonic scale. And if we look at the melody of Valerie, let's see if that's pentatonic. Well, sometimes I See, that's all from that pentatonic scale. You might find there's an odd song or two where it's, it leaves that scale, but predominantly most melodies are built from those core notes. Uh, okay, so let's look at what if I wanted to get a sort of minor shade over Valerie. So I've got kind of improvising in the major pentatonic. overdo it but that's just to show you that E flat minor or E flat blues scale that we um, were playing before in Superstition is also going to translate over Valerie if you just want to get a different flavor in your improvisation there. Now I'm going to look at a rock pop song Don't Want to Miss a Thing by Aerosmith. We're in D major. Don't want to close We're in D major. I want to work out my D major pentatonic. Go down a minor third and start my B minor pentatonic. There's my two shapes, there's my blues note. But now I'm thinking D to D and slipping onto that, that major third. And now let's hear it in context. So there's a little bit of uh, improv for you. Then I could use it as a riff between my chords. Oh, now finally working out the melody. You'll notice a lot of this melody is from that pentatonic. So find that first note. Don't wanna close my eyes. Okay, let's see how it goes. Don't wanna close my eyes. Don't wanna fall. Okay, I left the scale for that note. So all that is basically the major pentatonic, apart from that one note that, that stuck out. Now the reason I picked this example is there's a really cool bit that uh, the singer does about four minutes into the song. They do this sort of different chord progression and they go... They do this interesting chord progression halfway through when they're jamming out at the end. They go to B minor... riffs of the minor blues scale. So I'll see if I can work that out. Okay, so let's see how we go. B minor. And he goes. Not playing it very well, but you know the bit I mean? singing but yeah that's an example of how he set up this major tonality but he's just adding that bit of minor shade to give it a little bit of blues and soul right when it's really peaking when they're jamming out at the end so that's an example of using the, the minor blues 
major scale over the major pentatonic. an example of a major chord progression using the major pentatonic and the minor blues scale. Finally I'm going to show you three blues licks that you can use to start kind of making some nice sounds in there and we'll try them in a few different keys. All right first of all I want to um, give you the concept of the four note sequence. I'm going to use this pattern here. I'm going to use my C minor blues scale I'm going to use this pattern. I'm going to go up a third. When I'm saying a third, I mean a third within the scale. So I'm skipping a note. So I'm going up, down, down, down. I'm just using that pattern all the way up. Now that's one concept. I'll show you in context. playing superstition but I want you to think about this as a concept you could do a four note sequence going up you could go um, change the notes around so you, uh, you could go like this go upwards and the idea is that we're just creating a pattern and we're repeating it up the scale but where it gets tricky is the intervals between notes do change because they're not just you know a tone apart they've got minor thirds and tones in there so that's a concept there for improv the second lick I want to show you is the flick up flick down we're going to flick from the blues note into the fifth up to the tonic and then we're going to flick down now the cool thing about this one you don't have to do the exact same notes there you could go could do you know a variation like so in this one all I'm doing is a flick up but I'm getting the flat seven on my way up and then I'm landing on the fourth to slip into that blues note so yeah even though I'm just teaching you this you can do variations of that now the cool thing about that works over major keys too that even though I'm showing you in that minor blues context it will work over that relative major there's my example of my flick up flick down lick and finally I'm going to show you the double stop and I have a whole video devoted to double stops if you want to get it more in depth with these but this was a cool lick one of my favorites that I when I was starting out and all it is is you're playing a blues riff like this I'm going to play that riff but have that tonic note over the top so it gets a bit tricky because you have to really keep that pinky hammering the top so you're a bit limited with the notes you can use but once you get used to it you can use them all the time they're just great look at it in D minor make them your own um, they're a lot of fun finally 
that whole lick, that double stop lick, listen to it in the relative major. So D minor to F major. So instead of this being the tonic note, it's now the sixth note of F major. You get the idea. Pentatonics are awesome. Hey guys, I hope you got a lot out of that lesson and you now know how to create your scales, how to match them towards different repertoire, plus have a little bit of fun with the licks that I just showed you at the end there. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the lesson, please consider subscribing because I've got weekly lessons, plenty of ideas I want to cover, so keep coming back to the channel to check out my uh, lessons there. Thank you so much for watching. You're all legends. I'll see you in the next video.